it's a croaker penalty goal from downtown. That is the difference right now. Williams kicks. Tedesco's dropped oh, yeah. another. He's got back onto it. He's zero and three on the bombs in the second half. Well, they need something. Where are they? Tedesco's got to get back into play. Brooks, Moses. Three minutes to go. They need a try. Tigers haven't scored since the 25th minute of the game. 24 unanswered points from the Raiders. Close to maybe their third away win of the season. And that's no mean thing. Farrah's got the ball. Gets away from Hodgson. Risky ball. Sue comes up with it. And now the last tackle for the Tigers. They're all flat. Some sort of miracle minute here. Moses out in front of Lawrence. Lawrence is going to be held on halfway. Thanks. Not even a chip over the top with two and a half to go. Well, Tony, five tackles at Leichhardt Oval late in the game on, uh, on Sunday. Uh, how did it happen? Yeah, it obviously happened because we didn't follow the process. We've had a process in, uh, in place for a little while now where the uh, lead ref would call the tackle. That's confirmed by the uh, assist ref and ultimately a video referee has a level of responsibility around that. If he identifies an error, he's to, uh, to communicate with the on-field officials and have it rectified. That broke down uh, at Leichhardt yesterday and uh, uh, that's not good enough. And you've also identified that there was another incorrect count on Friday night. Yes, yeah, similarly on Friday night uh, in our internal review of the referees' performances, we identified that there was a seven tackle set for the uh, Bulldogs against the Sea Eagles on Friday night. Similarly in that uh, system, the process broke down. So obviously that's an uh, air of attention for the referees this week and uh, we'll be working really hard to have it uh, correct for next weekend. You mentioned the process. How do you ensure that um, the chances of this happening is is minimised? As I said, we've got a we've got a process in place, and it's worked well for the uh, the first part of this year. But obviously, uh, it uh, it broke down over the weekend in two games, and uh, we need to really refocus on that. And uh, the system works if the uh, if the assist ref and the uh, lead referee and the video referee all do their job. Obviously, that didn't happen this weekend. But as I said, it's an area of focus this weekend, and we need to be better at it. Another one at Leichhardt which um, created a bit of talk was an obst obstruction call. Uh, went against the Tigers late in the game. What were, what were your thoughts on that? Was that the correct call? Yeah, obviously the uh, live decision of the referee was no try and to review an obstruction. Uh, Keith Galloway uh, ran through, Robbie Farrow ran behind him. Uh, that disadvantaged the uh, defensive line of the Raiders and ultimately a try was claimed by uh, Luke Brooks but uh, clearly there was an obstruction in the lead up and it was a correct decision to rule no try, penalty to the Raiders. And there was a sin meeting on Saturday, uh, the Gold Coast Penrith game. Isaiah Yo uh, was uh, sin bin. Was that the correct call? Yeah, it was the correct decision for a uh, sin bin for a professional foul. The Titans had made a long break. That had one play of the ball. They'd gained about 15 metres. And uh, the actions of the Penrith player was to slow the play of the ball down. In those circumstances, that's a professional foul because uh, they were entitled to a quick play of the ball. And the momentum was uh, certainly in favour of the Titans. So correct the rule of penalty and appropriate to rule a sin bin. Clearly, Glenn, we made a lot of uh, good decisions over the weekend, but uh, they were let down by those tackle counts that I indicated before. But uh, decision making was good, but we need to be better in those core competency areas. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Glenn. That was Tony Archer, the referee's elite performance manager, looking at the weekend's round of football. Comparatively, the match review committee had a relatively quiet weekend. I caught up with the match review coordinator, Mick Butner, early today to look at the weekend's round. We've only got one charge uh, from round seven of the NRL. Dave Taylor looking at a grade one uh, careless high tackle charge for a tackle on Wanga Blake. Um, wanted to ask you about Dylan Farrell's tackle on Alex Glenn. That was placed on report. Um, high tackle there. Alex Glenn suffered an injury, but uh, there was no charge subsequently. No, that's right, Jacko. When we talk about uh, careless high tackles, I guess what needs to be determined first of all, if there was an act of carelessness. And on this occasion, if you look at the footage here, you'll notice that uh, he's just gone in for a, a conventional tackle. Alex Glenn has dropped quite significantly in the tackle. Um, and, you know, the force is probably considered high, or medium too high, but uh, nonetheless, Dylan Farrell hasn't done a lot wrong here. Therefore, the level of carelessness is uh, basically non-existent, um, despite the injury. And I guess when you determine charges, the injury becomes secondary in terms of gradings. Uh, but on this occasion, the key thing for us was to determine whether it was careless. Uh, and that was determined by the match review committee not to be the case. 
therefore no charge applicable. So when do you consider injuries uh, when it comes to the match review committee? Injury is uh, determined in terms of gradings. So as uh, you know, once we determine a level of guilt for the player, uh, and that may be careless, reckless or intentional, uh, then depending on the extent of the injury, that may be considered uh, when determining the grading. So take us through the process, Mick. Um, obviously, use Dylan Farrell as an example. Uh, he was placed on report. What's the process from there with the match review committee and, and, and ultimately, um, how do you come to the determination? Well, it starts with the uh, committee member who reviews the game live at home. Uh, he then submits a report within an hour after the uh, completion of the game. That report is then collated uh, and the team gather on Monday to go through all the incidents of the game. I guess the key part about the report that is submitted is that there is an opinion from that uh, reviewer as to what the decision, or at least the starting point, uh, that the rest of the committee can then determine um, as a collective group what the outcome may be. So uh, in that instance with D Dylan Farrell, it was pretty clear that uh, it was deemed by the uh, reviewer that this was a, a accidental or incidental incident in itself uh, and the rest of the panel determined that on Monday morning to be the case. Therefore, no charge applicable. Thanks, Mick. Pleasure.